Typically when you're dealing with notifications on Linux, you're going to use a notification daemon like say Dunst and output little GUI bubbles to your screen. But let's say you wanted to do something a bit more customizable than that. Let's say instead you wanted to do something like push notifications to your phone or you wanted to email yourself or something even more complex. Let's say you wanted to do both at the exact same time. And finding a tool that actually supports that for one or the other might be fine, but if you wanted to do both, Good luck finding that, you're probably never going to find anything that does that, unless you go and write it yourself. But what if there was a way to approach notifications in a more Unix way? Instead of working with GUI bubbles on your screen, let's say instead you work with text strings, and it turns out there actually is a way to do that, and that's what today's tool is going to be doing. So today, we're going to be looking at a tool by the name of Tiramisu, which I'm surprised that more people haven't heard about. This seems like the kind of tool that Luke would absolutely adore. I don't know how he hasn't come across this yet. So the way that this describes itself is desktop notifications done the Unix way. So basically what it's going to do is it's just a normal notification daemon, but instead of outputting a little GUI bubble to your screen, what it's going to do is output the information of that notification to stand it out. And basically what this means is you can take the output of that notification and do literally anything you want with it. So if you want to email yourself, if you want to have it in your bar, if you want to put it in a log file, I'll show you a few examples of how to do some of that in just a bit. But this tool is as powerful as you want it to be. Obviously by itself, it's not really that useful because all it's going to do is output the text to stand it out. And if you're just going to do that well, you're probably never going to see the notification. So obviously you have to put a bit more work into getting it to do what you want it to do. But this is a tool that does one simple job and it does it really, really well. So I say it does it really well, but there are currently two things missing from it. The notification level, so that would be low, normal or critical. And also the notification hint, which you've probably never even come across if you've been sending notifications yourself. Basically, it's a little bit of extra information you can send along with the notification. So you could say, I want to send the integer 53 or something like that. So if you're, I guess a good example of that is if you're trying to send a music notification and you want to say what number this is in the album or something like that, then you could use the hint for that. But typically most notification daemons kind of ignore this. I know that if you try to use it with Dunst, the notification won't even appear. So... A lot of notification daemons don't even bother with it, so a lot of notifications don't bother with it either. When you actually run the application, this is the format, the information we printed out in, but we're not going to be using this version of it. We're going to be using my fork of it, just because it's a little bit easier to use. But anyway, we have the application name, the application icon path, the notification action, and the action isn't currently supported, and I think the action is supposed to be the notification level, the notification hint, which is that little bit of extra information I told you about before, the replacement ID, the notification timeout, the summary, and the body. So the difference between this version and my version is I've changed all of these in here to be key value pairs. So instead of having to assume the actual line it's going to be on, I've made it so you can you can say, I want the value that is associated with this key. It just makes it a little bit easier to query, especially if you're going to be doing it with shell script. So let's go and get the application installed. Now, as of the recording of this video, there isn't an AUR package. There isn't a package on any distro. So what you're going to have to do is go and compile it yourself. But by the time this video comes out, there should be an AUR package because I'm going to do a separate video on how to actually create an AUR package. And this is going to be the example that I use. So hopefully... By the time you're watching this, there will be an AUR package. If there's not though, then follow along with the steps that I'm going to take. What you're going to have to do is go and clone the repo. Now, I'm going to be using my version, not the version on this repo. So I'm going to go over here and copy the link to the repo, go into my terminal, and then download the repo. So git clone. And then once that is done, we're just going to CD into that folder. So tiramisu. And all we have to do now is run make. Now, what this is going to do is actually put the binary file into this folder here. If you want to properly install it, I would recommend copying it into a folder called tiramisu in slash user slash bin. But you don't have to do that. Like with a script that's not in your path variable, if you just want to run this binary, all you'd have to do is just give the full path to where it's located. Or you could just give a relative path from where you currently are. So if you were in this folder right now, you would just say, dot slash tiramisu and that would actually run the binary. If you have another notification daemon running, 
Make sure you go and kill that first, just so they don't both try to absorb the notification. So I'm just going to try to kill Dunst, and I already killed it off camera, so I don't have any processes running. I know that some desktop environments get really finicky about trying to kill their notification daemon. I know KDE can be a bit weird about it, but if you're using a window manager like I am, there should be literally no problem about killing your notification daemon. So let's actually run the application. Now normally you wouldn't output directly to your terminal, you'd want to pipe it into some other application that can actually process the information. But for the sake of testing, we're just going to output it like this. So as you can see, it's running now and nothing's really happening. And that's because we need to actually make a notification. So I've got a notification bound to super T. Basically that's going to output all of my torrents. As we can see, the app name is notify send. So by default, when you use notify send, it's going to say that that's what actually sent the notification. You can change that and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. The timeout is set to negative one. So that means it's an infinite timeout. The summary is torrents, so in Dunst, the summary is the little bit of text that appears at the top, and the body is basically the rest of the text in the notification. Before we look at configuring this application, let's have a look at how to send a notification. So I wrote an example a bit off camera, but first we'll have a look at the man page. So man notify dash send. So most of the arguments are here, however there actually are a couple that are missing. The main one that's missing is there is no dash A. Dash A is basically how you set the application name. But the rest of them, I believe, are here unless there are some extras that I don't know about. If there are some extras I don't know about, they're not being used by this notification daemon anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So we've got the urgency, which is basically the importance of the notification. So low, normal, or critical. The expiry time. The icon you want to send along with the notification. The category, which I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean. This doesn't really uh, give you much information about it. I think that you can type in anything here, but it's not really clear by what's actually going on. And also the hint. So the hint is basically just a bit of extra information you can send along. As I said before, you could send along, say, an integer that is the number 5 or something like that. You can also send along a double, a string, or a byte. So let's have a look at that example I set up earlier. So that'll be this one right here. So what we're doing is we're running notify send with the dash u argument and setting the urgency level to normal. As I said earlier though, the urgency level isn't actually included in this notification daemon at this point, so you can just drop this argument and you're not going to lose any information. A lot of other notification daemons do actually do something with this. For example, in Dunst, it'll change the color of the bubble. The next one we have is dash T, so this sets the timeout, and I've got this set to 10 milliseconds. So this is in milliseconds and not in seconds. So you'd probably want to have this set to be something considerably longer than 10. The next one we have is the icon. So this will just send along the icon path, it won't send along as binary data. So if you want to actually show a notification on a different device, then you're going to have to send like a, a link to a website or something like that, or something that's actually available on that external device. The next one is the name of the application, I've just set it to name. Then we have the hint, and the format that that is in is the type, the name, and then the value. So in this case I'm sending int number one. So int is the type, number is the name, and one is the value. And then next up we have the summary and the body. So in this case it's hello world and hi. So if I just run this now, and we go over to the other screen, as you can see we have the app name which is hi, the timeout which is 100, the summary which is hello world, and the body which is hi. As we saw from the GitHub though, there is a bit of extra information we can send, and the way that we configure this is the suckless approach to configuration. So let's just delete the binary file and go into config.h. And all we have to do in here is uncomment the macros that we want to support. So as I said earlier, receive actions isn't supported, but we might want to see the icon name, we want to see the replace ID, and expire timeout doesn't actually do anything because expiry timeout is just always shown. So I feel like it was supposed to be a thing that you could hide, but then the developer never went and actually implemented that. So maybe I'll just go and do that myself. Now that that's done, let's go and recompile the application. All we have to do as we did before is run make. And then if we run dot slash tiramisu, that brings up the notification daemon again. Now let's just run that notification again, and as you'll see we have a bit extra information now. So we have the app icon, and also we have the replaces ID, 
which I'm not sure what that one actually does, and I haven't been able to find any information about it online. So if someone knows what that is, feel free to let me know. So that's pretty much everything for Tiramisu, but I thought it would be a good idea to also mention some of the tools you could use to do things like push notifications to your phone or to email yourself. Now, I'm not going to go in-depth into any of these tools because all of them are worthy of videos by themselves, but maybe it could give you some ideas about some of the stuff you could be doing and how you would go about doing it. So this right here is a tool called Notify. Basically, it's a very simple client server model where you have a notification server on your computer and it's a basically a node server and then you have a client on your phone and basically what it's going to do is let you send notifications from your terminal on your Linux system and then push them over to your phone. Now, I don't know how well this works, but it seems like it's a pretty cool tool. And it seems like it's pretty straightforward how it works as well. So all you'd have to do to send a notification is just run notify-t, obviously once the two devices are connected. But the way you actually send the notification once they are connected seems pretty straightforward. So maybe this would be a way you'd want to approach doing something like push notifications. Now, as for emailing, Emailing something that is obviously something you can easily do from your terminal. So you could use a command like send mail and basically all you do is redirect the contents of your email into the send mail command or you could use something like mail or you could use something like mutt or you could even use SSMTP. So there's plenty of different ways you could send yourself an email or send someone else an email. And the reason why you'd want to do this is let's say you were a system administrator and you weren't always actually looking at that system. It might be a good idea to say, I want the notifications actually sent to me because you're not always going to be at that system. And you probably want to know when something goes wrong. And I guess the easiest way to know about that is actually to have the system tell you that something's going wrong. Or another thing you could do is you could use a tool like YAD. This is basically a scriptable GTK interface builder and honestly it is really cool. So there are a few examples on here and you can get the examples to be really, really complex. So this example right at the top here, it's a lot of lines of code obviously. So let's just keep going down and you can see what it actually does. Basically this is a terminal settings window for your XVT. And obviously you don't have to make it this complex. You can make it as complex as you want it to be. But maybe this is another way that you could approach it as well. Let's say you wanted to have the notifications still be on your system, but you didn't want them to be done through something like Dunst. Or if you sent them to another system, well, they're not going to be treated as a notification over there. So you could make a dialog window on that other system to actually show the notification. Basically, what you can do with this application is entirely up to your creativity and how much work you actually want to put into actually making it do something really cool. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. Now, I'm going to keep using Dunst because I just like my notification bubbles being on my screen. I don't really need anything else besides that. But maybe you had some other use case you wanted to do that just wasn't possible with the existing notification daemons. Maybe Tiramisu is something you're going to want to look into. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Peter D, Rode, Tony Donald, Oculari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and also the audio version, which is available anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. Also remember to check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell come down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.